Hi, I'm Carol O'Mara, horticulture entomologist with Colorado State University Extension here in Boulder County. The time has come. It's towards mid-May, and I know you're out there shopping for your seedlings. It's the time to get all of this in the ground. So let's take a quick look at what you want to purchase so that you're not bringing home a problem. The seedlings at the stores are generally pretty good size by now, and you have your choice of some really wonderful plants. What you want to do is avoid a couple of problems. Take this tomato, for example. This poor little guy, it's pretty bedraggled. It was put out in the sun a little too early and it wasn't quite used to it. You can see here that on the leaves, it's got this bleach color to it. That's sunburn. That plant, it'll probably grow out of that, but some of the things that we wanna look at to make sure that you're getting an overall healthy plant before putting it in the ground is how much of the plant is gonna be suffering. What we have here are some of the lower leaves, a little bit sunburned, and a little bit hit by some of the frosts that have been pushing through here on a regular basis. Overall, if you're gonna be looking at this tomato plant, you might wanna be planning to plant it deep in the ground if this is the one you have to have. When looking to buy a tomato, what you wanna do is make sure it's got a really strong stem, something that's really stocky that'll help it stand up to our winds. A pencil is a really good way to measure how thick your stem is. What you want to do is make sure the stem is about pen pencil thickness and you want to make sure that the plant itself is not too leggy. This one is fairly compact in size. It's not reaching for the light, so it'll do just fine. On peppers, you want to look for strong stems also, but the problem with this one is it's not going to be nearly as thick as the tomato. It's just a different type of a plant, but what we have here is a little bit of a pepper that this one leaf got broken. That's not a problem. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be checking the upper and lower leaf surfaces to make sure this isn't carrying any kind of livestock like whitefly, aphids, or other type of insect problems into your yard. You wanna make sure all of the product is nice and clean. And one of the things to avoid, whether you're buying eggplant, peppers, tomatoes, it doesn't matter. Here is the one thing you don't want to have, and that is blossoms. Blossoms, I know they make it look like a great trophy plant, like it's ready to just jump out and give you all this fruit. But the thing is, is when you get it in the ground, you want that plant to be concentrating all of its energy into expanding that root system. Once it's got flowers on it, it's gonna be trying to produce more fruit and not expending a lot of energy on the roots. So when you purchase your plants, if it has flowers, go ahead and pinch them off. You wanna just take them right off of there so that the plant, when you get it in the ground, is gonna be focusing on the root system. Another thing to check is the root system itself. If your plant looks overall healthy, it's not drooping or anything, you may not need to do this in the store. But what you can do is go ahead and sort of loosen it in the pot a little bit so it'll slide out. Then you wanna move your hand across the surface of the soil so you're cradling the seedling. If you're tipping this over and you're trying to worry it out of the pot, and this one has gotten roots right through the fibrous pot, so it's a little bit more difficult to do, to take a look at the roots themselves to make sure they're healthy. You want to make sure that you're cradling this seedling so you're not pulling the seedling out of the pot. That's one good way to decapitate these plants and that's not what we're looking for. But if you can move them out of the pot so that you can see the root system, you're looking for creamy white succulent looking roots in the bottom. You don't want it to be all root bound if possible. This plant is absolutely perfect for planting in the ground right now because it's not root bound at all. You can go ahead when you're putting it in the ground, you can butterfly that out just a little bit to get that root system to expand out. But overall, this is a pretty healthy looking seedling considering that it's had a little bit of trouble with too much sun and a little too chilly nights. This pepper plant, on the other hand, we don't need to look at the roots in this case. We're gonna assume that given that the whole thing looks nice. One of the things that this type of pot, this fiber pot, recommends is that you plant it pot and all. But here's something crucial. When you're sinking a tomato into the ground, you can put it into the fiber pot even if the lip of the pot 
is taller than the soil level because you can bury tomato plants and they'll root along their stem. That's not the case with peppers. So given that this one is planted at least an inch and a half below the rim of this pot, if you were to take it at face value and sink this into the ground, you're either gonna plant it too deeply by putting it in the ground and covering it with soil, in which case you can see here, we're getting up way too high on the stem and that'll be a problem for the plant, or you're gonna keep the soil level at the level that it is in the pot, leaving all of this fiber exposed. In Colorado, because we're so dry and windy, what leaving the top of these fiber pots above the soil line is gonna do means that it's gonna pull moisture up with this fiber because this is very porous material. It's gonna hold this water and act like a giant wick. That wind is gonna come along and it's gonna pull all that water right away from the root system of this plant if we leave any bit of this pot sticking up. If you wanna try planting this one so that it is planted pot and all, you're gonna to have to get yourself a nice sturdy pair of scissors and cut down to remove part of these pots and take it off so that you can put this plant at the right level in the ground without creating a wick. But you can see here, these pots, they cut pretty quickly. There. We now have a pot that's perfectly sized for us to go ahead and get into the ground. Yet there's still another problem with that. This in Colorado, alkaline soils where we don't have a lot of acid to break things down and we have low relative moisture in the soils also, these might just petrify instead of breaking down like they do in other parts of the country. It might be worth your while to take them out of the fiber pots and go ahead and use the fiber pots, break them up as a little bit of a soil amendment. Just kind of cut them up like this. You can see how it pulverizes and you can put that into your compost pile or you can work that directly into your soil if you want to and then plant it out just like we have here with our tomato without the pot. But if you are gonna pick this one, it doesn't matter if it's a little floppy, peppers get that way. Just firm up the soil and you're gonna make sure that it has a nice sturdy stem, beautiful clean leaves with no flowers. That's how you pick out a seedling.